House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff says his committee will subpoena the president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, for documents pertaining to communications between himself, the president, and Ukrainian officials. Roxana Saberi is in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, with new information. I'm sure that issue of Biden was forever on the, on the, on the table between Zelensky and Trump. As a former lawmaker and advisor to Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, Serhiy Leshenko believes it was clear that President Trump wanted Ukraine to investigate his Democratic rivals. Of course, he wanted political privileges, favors for his re-election from Ukraine. In return for military aid? I would say yes. Do you have any evidence of that? It was like a well-known fact in Ukraine. In 2016, Lyshenko was at the center of exposing Paul Manafort's dealings in Ukraine. He says he recused himself from working for Zelensky in May this year after it became clear that could threaten relations with the Trump administration. Ukraine relies heavily on U.S. aid in its war against Russia. In July, Trump ordered nearly $400 million of that support withheld. Days later, in a phone call, he asked Ukraine's president to investigate the Bidens. According to the whistleblower's complaint, Mr. Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, made or attempted contact with at least seven Ukrainian officials, including then-prosecutor general Yuri Lutsenko. Lutsenko told the BBC Giuliani asked him to investigate the Bidens. Have you got any evidence that Joe Biden acted in any way which supported Hunter Biden's company, Burisma? It is not my jurisdiction. Under Ukrainian law, you've got nothing? Nothing, certainly. But Lashenko says Giuliani continued to press the issue. He told us Giuliani also tried to meet with President Zelensky before his inauguration. But Zelensky said no because he realized everything about this story is toxic. Roxana Saberi, CBS News, Kiev. The Washington Post did a deep dive into Hunter Biden's foray into Ukraine. The Post writes... For Hunter Biden, the job came with risks. Ukraine was in the throes of political upheaval, and there was building scrutiny of former government officials profiting in the lucrative gas industry. His father was the face of the Obama administration's effort to get Ukraine to crack down on corruption. Paul Sony leads the byline for that story. He's a national security and military reporter for The Washington Post. Paul, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. First, put into context for us, if you will, what was going on in Ukraine at the time that Hunter Biden joined this gas company? I mean, obviously, there, were, there was a lot of nefarious stuff going on with former government officials, you know, grabbing natural resources for themselves. Can you give us a little yeah. bit of a framework? Yeah, so the backdrop to all of this is a, a couple months, two months before Hunter Biden joined the board, there was, um, months in the months leading up to that, there were these Maidan protests, which were big protests on Independence Square in Kiev, and it was a coalition of Ukrainians, um, primarily fed up with corruption, um, who were fed up with the Yanukovych government, which was a, a, a Russia-leading government, and all of those protests kind of exploded early, early in 2014 with a shoot, uh, shooting that killed multiple people on Maidan um, and was blamed by the protesters on the government at the time. Um, and so what happened is Yanukovych fled the country. Um, he fled to Russia and all of his inner circle and um, people who were connected to him who were seen to have gotten very rich as a result of his uh, having held office in Ukraine, they also fled to Russia. Um, but there is his, his former ecology minister, who at the time was on the, uh, the Security Council at, of, of the country, he didn't flee. Um, he, uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't flee to Russia. He, he did leave the country. Um, but but he retained his assets, he retained his gas company, um, and in order to uh, sort of make sure that his assets uh, would survive, um, suddenly the company started bringing on very prominent Westerners onto its board, mm. uh, and one of those people was Hunter Biden. So this was sort of an effort to give the company some legitimacy, correct? Let's get some people with, some people who have, I don't know, legitimate standings in the U.S. And so when Hunter Biden was made this offer, Clearly, he must have been wary. So was it just purely about the money? 
Yeah, I mean, he hasn't he hasn't actually spoken to that, and nor has Joe Biden. I mean, we do know that he needed money at the time. If you look at his divorce filings, it's pretty clear um, that the family, he, he has three kids, um, and he had significant um, liabilities in terms mm -hmm. of how much money he need to, needed to make at the time. Um, so I think money, certainly, uh, it's, it's fair to say that that was a factor. Um, and, and, and yes, uh, it, it is a question of how much did Hunter know about the company, how much did he know about its ownership. You know, by the time he joined the company, it was already facing, um, its owner was already facing a money laundering investigation mm -hmm. in the UK. Um, it, its assets, it over $20 million in the UK had been frozen, um, in, in part as in relation to all of this upheaval in Ukraine. And it was, um, it was also yeah. sketchy enough that you point out that he had American business partner, partners that parted ways with Hunter over his decision to join this company, correct? Yeah, so at the time, he was in an investment partnership with uh, John Kerry's stepson, Chris Hines, um, as well as another guy named Devin Archer. And Devin, both Devin and um, Hunter joined the board, and Chris Hines said that he, um, you know, warned Devin, like, this is really not a good idea. I really don't think you should do this. Um, and that is kind of what ultimately precipitated, he says, um, the breakup of their investment firm. So clearly some people thought it was problematic. But so one of the main questions that everyone has is, did Joe Biden himself understand the optics of having his son work for this problematic company at the same time that he was leading America's crackdown on Ukrainian corruption? Or are adult children just something that you can't control? I mean, some parents have pointed out, you know, I have trouble, I have trouble telling my, my son not to get a tattoo. You know, I don't know that they always yeah. listen to what their parents tell them. But is yeah. this a conversation that they even had? You know, I don't know if they had it up front in terms of did they have it before he actually joined the board in May 2014, but certainly as he took the position and then um, Biden, his father, became more and more visible as the face of anti-corruption efforts in Ukraine, people started asking the question. I was I was a reporter in the region at the time, and I was asking the question. So it's not as if, um, and we do know that it, you know, people had, were discussing it around Biden at the time. So, you know, did he maybe see it in advance before? We don't know whether Hunter had mm -hmm. any discussions with his father before joining the board, but certainly after he did, um, you know, it was it was a topic of public conversation, if not, you know, at this level that it is now. Right. Now, in terms of that prosecutor that this is all sort of hinging on, there have been reports that that prosecutor, Victor Shokin, was intending to question Hunter Biden's qualifications. Yeah. Is that yeah. is that accurate? Well, he, that is what he told us. Um, you know, he, he and Rudy Giuliani um, have both claimed that um, he was fired uh, in part by, you know, as a push by Joe Biden, um, in part because he was investigating Burisma at the time. Um, there was no indication. All of those the investigations at the time, they predate, you know, they were related to years that predated Hunter Biden being on the board. So there wasn't a suggestion at the time that Hunter Biden was under investigation. Um, and, you know, Shokin was the prosecutor for over a year you know, before he was fired. So if he had wanted to investigate that, he, sh he surely could have been able, was able to at the time. Um, but yes, you know, his office did have an investigation into the company uh, underway before he was fired. It did. Um, it did have an investigation. You found that for sure. Yeah, there, yes, yes. Zuchewski okay. was being investigated at the time, um, and, but the, actually the, the U.S. Embassy at the time was, was saying, was, was criticizing the Prosecutor General's office for not, for fumbling that investigation, for not actually f uh, pursuing Zlachevsky. Um and, and all these civil society activists and U.S. And, we and European officials in the time were very critical of Shokin for not going after uh, high-level corruption cases like, um, you know, like that that was pending against Zlachevsky, which was you know, the guy who owned Biden. The right. It's Biden an, was I think for. it's an important distinction to make because a lot of people who are critical of, of what happened in Ukraine with Joe Biden's son seem to think that this prosecutor had his sights set on this company. But it appears that the prosecutor was not really going after a lot of things and, and was booted because he wasn't aggressive enough, correct? That was, yes, that was actually the, the, the perception at the time. Uh, there were also a lot of scandals related to the prosecutor's office at the time. There was this diamond prosecutor scandal where um, people in the prosecutor general's office were found with uh, stashes of diamonds and big stashes of cash in their house. So, you know, this, this wasn't the top of the agenda at the time. Um, but it was something that people were paying attention to because there was this broad criticism of him that he's not mm -hmm. going after these former Yanukovych ministers. And Hunter Biden has since uh, resigned from the board of this company. Is that correct? Are there other Americans? who remain on this board? 
Yeah, um, as, far as, as of recently, Kofor Black, who is um, a former CIA official, he's still on the board. The uh, president of Poland, former president of Poland, Alexander Kraszniewski, is still on the board. Um, but yeah, Hunter Biden did step down um, r in May after mm -hmm. you know reports about Rudy Giuliani going to Kiev surfaced. Right. Okay. So you do mention Hunter Biden told the New Yorker earlier this year, "quote." I would never have been able to predict that Donald Trump would have picked me out as the tip of the spear against the one person they believe can beat them. So do you have any insight into how this controversy may be playing out inside the Biden family? I mean, we know this family has had a lot of tragedy, so it, it, it must be tricky. Yeah, I mean, I think what, some of the real questions that people have are, you know, they both, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, said they never discussed this, or, you know, maybe in passing, Joe said something to Hunter, like, I hope you know what you're doing. Um, but, you know, the real question is, what is the relationship there? I don't think, um, I don't think Joe has really spoken that much about it. Hunter did, as you say, a little bit in that story um, about, you know, what was their relationship? Um, did, did Joe Biden feel like he couldn't intervene or somehow curb Hunter's activities because he was an adult? And, you know, what, what, what was going on there. And I think probably the Biden campaign is going to keep getting asked that until um, until Joe Biden talks a little bit about it. Yeah, which he hasn't been doing so far. All right. Well, yeah. Paul Sony, we thank you so much for sharing your incredible reporting with us. Thanks again. Thanks.